guys, Ebony and Leo here from Black Snake Productions. What are we doing today, Leo? We're gonna get gum leaves. And what are the gum leaves for? The little mint berries. The little what? The little... Stick insects yeah. and there's a lot of mosquitoes today, isn't there? But that's okay. I got one, okay. So yeah. we're gonna collect some eucalypt leaves for our stick insects and we've got a nice surprise later don't we what's the surprise easter easter it is easter coming up but we've got baby stick insects newly hatched stick insects that we've got for you guys to have a look at so we'll go and search for some new eucalyptus leaves for them to eat because yeah. they love to eat eucalyptus yeah that's bamboo we have to search a little bit harder for eucalyptus leaves Hey guys, Mike from Black Snake Productions here, and as Ebony and Leo have said, we're looking at stick insects today, and more specifically, we're going to be setting up some enclosures for stick insects inside the house for the kids during this uh, time in isolation. This is a perfect thing to do because everything you need can actually be bought online and much of this stuff has actually been sent to us recently online so that the kids can have them in the house even though we do have a colony in the reptile room. So Chatty's just putting a bit of mulch in the bottom that helps to clean uh, the enclosure when we do want to empty it out. It also creates a humid environment and a substrate for the eggs to land in. And obviously it makes it look a little bit nicer, so it's for aesthetics as well. Now we've got our little helper running around, that's Lexi the long bill Corella, pulling on the gum leaves. And what we're going to do now is actually get something just to make it look, not only look a bit nicer, but this is really important to maintain humidity. Because this is such a well-ventilated enclosure, we've actually got some sphagnum moss growing around the property here, and we're going to put that in the enclosure. This is something you do or don't have to do uh, for the enclosure, depending on how well-ventilated it is. And if you can't source your own sphagnum moss, you can actually go and get it from Bunnings. You can get uh, packaged stuff. So we're going to speed this up, obviously. Chatty's going a bit nuts here, putting all that sphagnum moss in. And one of the most important things to remember with stick insects uh, is you're going to have them in the house. You can't use fly sprays or bug sprays because obviously it's going to kill them as well. We're going to put this big fat jar in now. And this is one of the more important parts of maintaining stick insects is maintaining their food. So keeping the leaves nice and fresh and just like a glass of flowers or a vase of flowers, we're gonna replace that about once a week. Now you need to get those fresh gum leaves in about once a week. And one of the best things to do is get gum leaves that have new shoots. So nice new growing tips on them because the stick insects do prefer the nice soft leaves compared to the old ones. So we grabbed some a bit earlier. We got some acacia here, uh, similar to wattle. And uh, we've basically got a, a bit of a spray of the local stringy bark. And that's uh, one of the local eucalypts here in the Yarra Valley. So these guys will eat those, uh, although they do prefer the eucalypt uh, over things like rose bushes or acacia, which they'll sometimes eat. Now, stick insects like, uh, like the ones we've got here today, the Maclay stick insects, can also be handled pretty regularly, uh, but you do need to be really careful. And when handling them, the best thing to do is let them walk on your hand. So not to actually pick them up because you can damage them. And you'll see that here as the kids put them in their enclosure. I'll pop it onto the stick. Have you put yours in there? Chad, put yours in there. There you go. There you go. Put yourself in front of it. There you are. And pop it on the leaf. So the reason why we got those nice fresh eucalypt leaves, why did we get those nice fresh eucalypt leaves? Can you remember? So they can eat them. All our babies, they're finally hatching. Can you see all these eggs? What egg? Can you see all these eggs, Leo? How about we pick one up? See this? This is a stick insect egg. 
this one here is already hatched. See how it's hollow at the top there? Let's try and find one that hasn't yet. That one hasn't. So these are stick insect eggs. So those little babies that we found came out of these little eggs. So as a day old, when they hatch out of an egg, they look just like little meat ants with their red head and their fast movements. And that is a great way to protect yourself from predators because not many animals will eat those feisty little meat ants. As they grow older, they have a slightly different way of protecting themselves. These guys will protect themselves using their camouflage to look like a dead leaf or a curled up piece of bark, swaying slightly in the breeze to mimic the environment they're in. I hope you guys have learnt lots about these incredible insects, but you know what? There's still one really amazing thing we need to learn. So guys, as you can see, stick insects of all sizes and shapes, and these are all spiny or maclay stick insects, do make excellent pets. They're very easy to set up as a pet, as Chad has shown you earlier. And these awesome little insects are very cost efficient because they only eat gum leaves. One of the coolest things about stick insects is that if you have a few of them, you're going to have a self-maintaining population. What that means is you don't ever have to buy new stick insects because they'll keep breeding, even if you have a few girls, because one of the most amazing things about these stick insects is that they can actually produce babies or eggs that will hatch into babies without mating. And that is called parthenogenesis. Now let's see if our kids here can say parthenogenesis. So Chad, what do you reckon? Parthenogenesis. Right, thumbs up for that one. Sandy? Parthenogenesis. Yep, thumbs up. Leo? Parthenogenesis. Pretty close, so thumbs up for that one. So parthenogenesis is the way that these animals can reproduce without mating. Some geckos have done it. One of the coolest animals that have ever done that is actually the Komodo dragon that had babies or eggs that hatched into babies at London Zoo without actually ever being with a male, which is pretty amazing. And as always with Black Snake Productions, our filming has been interrupted by multiple animals and Lexi, our long-billed corella flying around in the background. All right, guys, look, I hope you've enjoyed today's video, our little family video on the spiny or Maclay's stick insect. And from all of us here at Black Snake Productions, we hope you've enjoyed another one of our wildlife bites. Click like, share, and uh, recommend the videos to your friends and keep updated for the next videos over the next few days. All right, guys, what do we say to all our friends and fans? Like and share. Comment. <laughs> and yeah. see you later, alligator. Yeah. Don't forget your toilet paper. Yeah, it's really expensive at the moment. Yeah. See you guys. <laughs>